I'm James Roy, and on this Dynamo discussion, we're gonna be talking about the draw against the Sporting KC in Hell in a Shell, and we're gonna be talking about the transfer window, de designated players, and the Dynamo versus Surge. So without further ado, let's get started. So as a new fan of MLS soccer particularly, but really just soccer in general, the, the way by which players move from team to team, and especially with international being a thing, is, is a mystery to me. So this bit about designated players and transfer windows, mostly just gonna be masking questions for y'all to possibly comment and answer for me because I've tried to research this, but as, as you guys may know, and as I'm finding out, the MLS is less than forthcoming with any details about anything that goes on. So I've done a little bit of research, and so my understanding is, is that the designated player rule was established in 2007. It's otherwise known as the David Beckham rule, and it's what allowed uh, the LA Galaxy to bring Beckham in, even though he's a player that probably deserves far more money than an MLS team could offer. Um, each team has three designated player slots, and at this moment, the Dynamo are using them on Ferreira, um, Hadib, and uh, Herrera. Now, Hadib is injured, but Ferreira was the leading goal scorer last year. Did, did a little research and found that out. And for some reason, he's not being used a lot. Herrera, obviously, great use of a DP slot. The dude is, is team captain and, and heart and soul of the team, really one of the main draws that the team has right now. The question is, is if Herrera is not going to get used the way he should, in my opinion, right, like I, like I said, I don't understand anything about this, so maybe it's just not a wise move. I've, I've read from sources um, from other Dynamo fan accounts that you know, with the use of roster slots the Dynamo are using right now, relative to their cap room. There's not really expected to be a lot of moves outside of what they did with uh, re-upping with Nelson. Outside of that, there's not really expected to be a lot of movement, but I do, to me, the question needs to be asked if Ferreira is not being used to his full potential and he's being designated as a designated player, which seems like a slot you'd want to use on someone who's starting for the team. Um, why is he still on the team? I, that, that, there's no other real way for me to ask that question. I mean, if, it, if he could be better used as a, a transfer target and we could bring someone else in to that slot that would better serve the team, then why are we not doing that? Now, I, as far as the transfer window goes, I, I don't really have any targets in mind. I'd love to hear from y'all some players that you think the Dynamo should be targeting, but I, I just can't imagine it not being a good idea to bring in someone else outside of Ferreira at this time. The Dynamo have gone back to the drawing board, pun fully intended, with a 2-2 draw. Now, I, I caught most of the match. I was engaged with a you know, family being over, so I was, I was watching it in between bits and pieces, but I caught all the goals. And um, my big takeaway from this matchup for the Dynamo is that I, from my observations throughout the season, it's kind of like the Astros where um, you, know, you can have good pitching, you can have a good bullpen, you can, you can get run support, but you can't get all three at the same time. And so with the Dynamo, I've observed that it would seem as though you're either gonna get defense or offense. Um, very rarely do they both work out at the same time, which is why the Dynamo games generally are, you know, nil for one of the teams. Um, so it's interesting to see a 2-2 draw. Um, I felt like the movement of the ball, the Dynamo held possession, playing, you know, playing their game, playing possession football. Um, they, they hung on to the ball and they made some really great passes. I think particularly the goal in stoppage time was a really good move, but I, I, I think of the two goals early on, um, Aliou's goal uh, early in the game, to me was the better play with the way that, they, that Herrera passed in and then made the move in to get the next pass and passed the, to the assist over to Aliou to get him that goal. I thought that play couldn't have gone any better. It looked super awesome. In, in replays, I, I'm, I've been watching the replays a lot over the past couple of days because I thought it was a really good play. But overall, it, the K, KC is a team that's 10 seed and, and the Dynamo, they salvaged a point against the team, but it feels like when you're playing in Shell Stadium, bringing a team into Hell in the Shell, that you should be able to do a little better than the Dynamo did. The, there was a couple of defensive you know, brain farts uh, that kind of resulted in the tie. Um, and another part of the matchup was there was uh, quite a few yellow cards handed out. And the one that stuck out to me the most was in stoppage time, Ferreira, who we talked about earlier, running up to a player who's getting ready to set the ball in play and just pushing him. Very not soccer thing as far as, as, far as I've seen so far. So I'm just a little 
perplexed as to why he did it. I'm, I'm surprised it wasn't a red, just, you know, not understanding red and yellow cards. I would have thought that that was severe enough to warrant a red card, but they said it wasn't. Um, I, I think that's going to get reviewed. That's what I've seen across Twitter and everywhere that I've looked is that they think that's going to get reviewed and might be raised to a suspension at the very least. But overall, it was an interesting game, and, and it doesn't stop on the field because up next we're going to talk about how the Dynamo, for some reason, wanted to catch all that smoke from the surge, the support group. So I'm going to recount to you my timeline and understanding of this. I've got some tweets that will support what I'm saying because um, obviously I wasn't there, but it all starts with the promo leading up to this game. The Dynamo put out that there was going to be a pregame barbecue. Apparently a lot of people lined up at six to go to that, and I, I couldn't quite put together. It seems like the barbecue just didn't happen. I think it was supposed to be a meet and greet with the players, uh, but either way, they, they advertised very heavily on their page that they were going to have this barbecue, that they were going to do it, and then fans came and, and then eventually were you know, kind of left perplexed because there was nothing there to be had. Um, and then it just kind of digresses from there. Um, a couple accounts of the surge group president being kicked out of the game for an action that he has been doing the entire thing. I believe he's standing on rails, waving a flag, um, and the security said, hey, you can't do that. You got to get out of here, even though he's been doing that every home game the entire season. Um, and then a horn player showed up late, got turned away. They couldn't bring their horn into the game. They had to put it in their car and then they had to come back in. And so it just, it seems like in this sport, my understanding, right? Having watched a couple of soccer games, the fan atmosphere is the most vital part of this game. Um, I, I am on record as saying, I, I felt like the World Baseball Classic was baseball, but with soccer fans. I mean, there, there's a different element that's brought by that fandom into the game. And when you as a team either don't understand or interfere with that, you're, you're messing with I don't know. You got a lot of international players on the team like Herrera who are used to that. You know, the Mexico national team, while their fans are in hot water over some less than awesome chance, he knows what that atmosphere is like. And Herrera is on record as saying that he's perplexed that Shell Stadium can't sell out when international games come into NRG and sell out a far bigger stadium. So all that to say, when when you as an organization play in a sport where the fan response is that vital, like I'd say more so than just about any other sport on the planet. Um, it, you should have a brief with your, your security team and there should be an understanding that there are certain things that are gonna go because it's just part of being a fan of the game. The waving banners, playing instruments, making noise, that kind of thing is, is vital to the home team. It's, it's one of the things that makes the, the phrase hell in the shell work. I, you don't have that without the fans or without Shell's sponsorship of the stadium really, but that, you know, I think that can stick even when they leave. Really it's the fans that do it. And so I think that we need something from the Dynamo in the coming days that shows that they understand that, that they see where their security team fell short and they make an apology. I know that the surge group is, is considering a boycott. I wouldn't blame them for it, um, but yeah. So I, I mean, I think that's a situation where the team needs to make it right, and I'm interested to see what they have to say about it. This has been a Dynamo discussion. I've been James Roy, and if you want to find me on social media, it is at M1TextansFan on all platforms. And if you like this episode of Dynamo Discussions, you should like it, and you should leave a comment answering my questions earlier in the episode and subscribe to my channel. Uh, and if you like Houston sports or sports in general, that's also a good reason to subscribe to my channel. But until next time, stay classy, Houston.